So there's a universal law called the universal law of inverse proportions. Not to be confused with the mathematical formula of inverse proportions where you're flip-flopping fractions, but this is inverse proportions as it pertains to breathing. This is universal law 144. Now, essentially what it means and what it says is that if you can breathe slower, you can live longer. What it essentially says is that if you can breathe slower, you can live longer. Now, where they're getting this from is a lot of the yoga practices, a lot of tantric practices where they talk about retaining the prana. Now, prana is not simply air, but it's supposed to be the life force of all creation, which is also contained in the air. <clears throat> so, um, and I might not have the numbers exact, but they have it like where if you're breathing 30 something respirations per minute, life expectancy is like about 70. If, you know, if it's slower, if the respirations are lower, you live longer. Like for instance, if respirations are lower to 18 respirations per minute, you, you'd make it to be about 98 and so on and so forth. Where if it's, I forget how low you have to have it for like 300 years, but what they essentially say is that you need not die. Although these bodies are subject to decay, there's practices put in place where you can retain uh, what is atomically available for you for the rejuvenating, replenishing of your body. So essentially it's a fountain of youth, but it's not taken in through water. It's a fountain of youth that's really taken in through air. So you're taking it through air and how you're breathing and how long you can retain the air that you breathe in. Where now this may sound far fetched until you start considering how increased heart rate can be linked to shorter lifespans. For instance, we always say that a dog one year for a dog is 10 years. Well, when you look at how high the dog's heart rate is, this is essentially <clears throat> the case. And when you look at animals with higher heart rates, they tend to have shorter lifespans because they have many more respirations per minute. So this essentially means that it's coming down to a count. It's coming down to a certain kind of rhythm that you can have about yourself that will prolong your life. This is what the uh, the universal law states. So you'll notice too, just in your own experiences, if you've ever dealt with anxiety, if you ever dealt with uh, you know the paras the parasympathetic nervous system coming into play after you've calmed down from a fight or flight scenario. Once the adrenaline wears off, your breathing is, uh, again, reduced, slowed, and you kind of feel like you can gain your senses again. Whereas the other way around, your heart rate can be jacked up to such a degree where you feel like you black out or are not quite aware of what's going on. So these are also areas where you can point to the validity of this universal law just looking at those things and you're also looking at just the relaxation factor is part of it then there's another part that comes with de-escalating anger so when you're ever in a situation where you're made to be angry or tempted to be angry or about to get angry <clears throat> focus on your breathing and see if you can take the longest, slowest, deepest breath that you can. Don't telegraph it. Whereas socially, that cue can be misread as a taunting due by show of exasperation. You don't want to be like, Ugh, you know, that can make it worse. But just take a very, very deep nasally breath and relax. For one, the diversion of thought 
going from the given scenario to the breathing is going to drastically reduce the angry response by at least 50%. And then the more you concentrate on that breath, you're breathing. It's the one breath, though, because what you want to do is you want to immediately divert all of your attention to something else. It's not that you're not being aware of the argument, aware of the confrontation that is presenting itself to you, but you want to respond rather than react. And this takes what would at first seem like an eternity of a pause, but it's really not. It's just a matter of a few uh, a few short seconds, a few brief seconds. But in the span of time, when you're going through that racing and your, your thoughts are racing, you want to have a response. You got all kind of profanities, just ready to let go, to let loose. When you take that extra few seconds to just breathe slowly, you're going to find yourself unwinding and being able to let go. So all of these things are also tied into inverse proportions too, because now you're flipping the deck. You're flipping the reciprocal. The top is the bottom and the bottom is the top. You're flipping what would be looked at as the natural progression of life. You're flipping that on its head. And it's not so much the natural progression of life as it is just the regularity of things, the uh, being mo mundane, the same old, same old. Something happens, we respond or we, we we react. We get angry if something tempts us to be angry. We respond with force, with anger, with violence, etc. But to short circuit all of these things by focusing on the breathing puts you in a space where you can avoid that conflict and you're really increasing and retaining life force when you do this. So these are just some things to, to take into play. Breathe slower, live longer. Breathe slower, live longer. You got to learn how to relax. You got to learn how to go with the flow. It's not so much that the athletes have a poorer genetic makeup in that they have hereditary aging in their family that seems to be more rapid. No, it has everything to do with the sustained increase in heart rate. Now, am I speaking against exercise? No, because boosted heart rate in good periodic intervals, this directly points to the health and the circulation of the body. So these things are necessary. But to have that constantly, which is to be in an environment that is not suitable that always has your fight or flight response up you're going to experience through stress which is now this makes it a stressful environment you're going to experience a shorter lifespan and it's going to be sending some bells and whistles at you maybe in the form of shortness of breath in the form of migraine in the form of back pain it'll exhibit itself in a in a plethora of ways just to remind you that your calibration may be off energetically. And this again comes with the breathing. The breathing comes with the count. So there it is. That's the fountain of youth. And as you can see, a lot of what controls the valves and the plumbing for this fountain of youth is mainly psychological. You have to be able to guide your mind to slow your body down. You don't mash on the gas when you see the yellow light change in the red in case you get to the intersection too late trying to speed get into an accident in the intersection the yellow light is for you to slow down and yellow also points to the sun illuminating helping you to slow down and savor each second and moment in life and when you're slowing things down like this naturally you're going to get a rhythm naturally you're going to get a count and with that count Naturally, you'll get more of a longevity, a handle on life, more sustainability on life and a better grip on your overall self and essentially your physical mortality. So, again, a super T Sigma of Sigma programming. Continue to learn, continue to earn. Peace.